Greetings to all. My name is Dr. Moeri Zubaka, radiology resident, studying in TNM and Environment Hospital, Mumbai. Today, I am presenting paper on the topic of virtual bronchoscopy, state of the art and future needs. MDCT has been a revolution in CT technology with its inherent speed and ability to acquire thinner section polymetrically. Modern MDCT scanners enable post-processing multiple reconstruction in orthogonal and non-orthogonal planes, including curved planes with near isotropic resolution. Improved software and advanced workstation enable radiologists to post-process data set in 3D or volume render mode, which supplements information available on the Excel and MPR images increasing the diagnostic accuracy manifolds. Virtual bronchoscopy essentially is such a post-processing technique which creates 3D rendition of the inner surface of the tracheobronchial tree, simulating endolumology as put visible on the actual bronchoscopy. Virtual bronchoscopy has gained a lot of quality and diagnostic potential. It is important to understand the pearls and pitfalls of the virtual bronchoscopy so that this technique can be optimally utilized. The following illustrative cases highlight the utility of virtual bronchoscopy in the diagnosis of varied tracheobronchial pathologies encountered. Moving to the first case, a 35-year-old male patient presenting with new onset dyspnea over one year with pulmonary function test demonstrating a restrictive pattern. XHSP and lateral view findings went unnoticed initially. CT thorax was done one month later because of non-resolution of the symptoms. Coronal CT of this patient demonstrate an ill-defined homogeneous mass in the distal left mainstem bronchus. On virtual bronchoscopy, we can see endoluminal growth, which is just proximal at the bi before bifurcation of the left mainstem bronchus. These findings were confirmed on the flexible bronchoscopy. This is the endobronchial growth, which is seen just proximal to the bifurcation of the left mainstream bronchus. Moving to the next case. This is a 65-year-old male complained of unexplained hoarseness of voice. CECT neck as suggestive of ill-defined mass involving the vocal cords, anterior commissure, a blind ending sinus in C is seen within the mass. This is the mass. This is the sinus tract. Moving to the next case, a two-year-old female child came with the complaints of feeding difficulty and recurrent aspiration. CT and virtual bronchoscopy are of benefit in preoperative planning of such patients. On CT, we can see there is connection between the trachea and the esophagus, suggestive of tracheoesophageal fistula. On virtual bronchoscopy, this is the fistula, esophagus. Trachea. This is the carina, left menstrual bronchus, right menstrual bronchus. Going to the next case. This is a 65 year old female patient with past history of prolonged intubation. There is tracheal narrowing noted on CT. On virtual bronchoscopy, there is stenosis of the trachea. This patient underwent tracheostomy afterwards. This is another case showing subglottic stenosis. This is epiglottis, vocal cords. This is the stenotic part. These are images of the same. Virtual bronchoscopy is useful in the evaluation of patients with significant stenosis of the respiratory tract as a result of the broad spectrum pathological states. Virtual bronchoscopy is particularly suitable in some diseases of the chest as bronchoesophageal fistula after lung transplantation, anastomosis, 
suspected aspiration of a foreign body and respiratory disabilities. Virtual bronchoscopy enables accurately to inspect the lumen and the diameter of the bronchial tree to assess the stenosis of the airway to visualize remote prominent lesions. The images look very similar to what's seen with fibrobronchoscopy. The intravenous introduction of the contrast medium does not affect the quality of the virtual bronchoscopy images. Moreover, it is proven that virtual bronchoscopy can be useful for determining the appropriateness of the endobronchial procedure, such as extension, placement of a stent, and laser ablation of the endobronchial tumors. The main limitation of the virtual bronchoscopy refers to inability to reliably isolate the mucosal surface of the airways. Therefore, virtual bronchoscopy may not be used for routine monitoring of a patients at high risk of developing malignant diseases of the respiratory tracts. These are some advantages of the virtual bronchoscopy. It is non-invasive procedure that can visualize areas inaccessible to the flexible bronchoscope. Virtual bronchoscopy helps in the evaluation of the bronchial stenosis or obstruction caused by both endoluminal pathology and external compression. Virtual bronchoscopy helps in planning of stent placement before the procedure. To evaluate surgical suture after drug transplantation, lobectomy or pneumonectomy. To evaluate anatomical malformation and bronchial variants. Disadvantage of virtual bronchoscopy are it does not allow detection of the subtle mucosal lesion. Because virtual bronchoscopy is an imaging technique based on CT, for CT it is always necessary for the patient to expose to the radiation. Virtual bronchoscopy depends on the availability and use of the hardware, CT and software. Virtual bronchoscopy will never replace fibrobronchoscopy, but in some cases it can help fibroscopy directly and sometimes it can give additional information. These are my references. Thank you.